continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. We're looking at number two here. Number two here is a faithful declaration on future worsening kingdoms. Now it's going to tell the dream and the dream is going to tell about the kingdoms of the earth from one to the other, from the other to the next one, from the next one to the final one before Christ will come. And this is about the kingdoms of the world that will be going from bad to worse and worse to worse and worse to the worst. It tells us in Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 28, Daniel chapter 2 we're reading from verse 28 but there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets do not be afraid or ashamed to declare that a God exists anywhere you are and you know because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth whether they are Jews or Gentiles do not be ashamed and here uh, Daniel was not ashamed he said but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be be in the latter days the dream was not just for the days for the time for the period when Nebuchadnezzar was alive it will be for the latter days the dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these look at verse 29 in verse 29 as for thee O king thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed now daniel is revealing even the thoughts that nebuchadnezzar had before the dream came he said nebuchadnezzar you must remember when you were to sleep you were thinking in your heart what shall be after you have left, because you are going to leave. Although the magicians and astrologers are saying, King, live forever, you and I know that you are going to depart. And the, the thought came to your mind, what shall come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. In verse 30, in verse 30, he tells us, but as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of your heart. He said that's the reason why. Now, the confidence that Daniel had. The declaration that Daniel made fearlessly, courageously, without being afraid of Nebuchadnezzar, of Ariok, of any other uh, uh, Chaldean, that's the kind of courage he wants us to have. That's the kind of mind he wants us to have when he sends us to declare what will come upon people now and also in the future. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 7, Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 7, but the Lord said unto me, unto me, Jeremiah, and unto you as well. The Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Then in verse 8, it tells us in verse 8, be not afraid of their faces because you think their faces show their mind their faces reflect the thoughts they have their faces will show you what they are planning what they are thinking and if they are going to hurt you or harm you you'll see it on their faces except they train themselves not to show it on their face and so uh, uh, jeremiah don't be afraid do not be afraid 
of their faces for i am with thee to deliver thee says the lord in verse 9 it says then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i have put my words in thy mouth and then in verse 10 it says see i have this day said thee over the nations and over the kingdoms and to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant it doesn't want us to be you know shivering and shaking and timid and fearful and frightened before the people he sends us to god loves them and he sends us a message of love that will save their soul, that will deliver them from eternal death, that they will not perish. And if you carry such a wonderful message, a life-saving message, a soul-saving message, and you love the people you are speaking to, then you and God has assured you that he is sending you. He put his word in your mouth. You will not be afraid in Jesus' name. I will not be afraid in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils look at verse 6 even in that situation in verse 6 it says if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things thou shalt be a good minister when you put the people in remembrance this is what god has said this is what is happening now everything is according to his word this is prophecy being fulfilled and you remind them that christ is about to come and everyone that is not saved or backsliding shall come back and be saved and everyone that is saved and is not a living a consistent holy life and without holiness no man shall save the lord you encourage them and you pray with them and you counsel them that whatever challenges in their lives not making them to show that consistent life of christian faith and salvation you root that out of their lives and you lead them to real repentance and restoration and you lead them to that sanctification that without holiness no man shall say the lord and then you let them seek the power of god that will strengthen them embolden them encourage them empower them that's what the lord is calling us to and we do that without any fear and we do that without uh, you know shaking or uh, whatever before anyone it says you put the brethren in remembrance of this thing thou shalt be a good minister of jesus christ nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast ordained uh, attain it says in verse 16 uh, in verse 16 take heed unto thyself don't be timid take heed unto thyself live courageously live with conviction and live without compromise take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear the amen look at number three here number three now we're looking at the uh, firm decree of the most foremost wise king that's god we're talking about god is foremost is the highest is eternal and is and when one kingdom passes away he still remains there and when one king dies and changes and god changes him and he setteth up another god is still there and when one powerful emperor powerful man powerful king when he's deposed when he is pushed aside another one comes god is still there. the same god at the time of uh, pharaoh the same god at the time of the assyrian king Sennacherib, at the same god at the time of nebuchadnezzar the same god at the time of herod is still the same god on the throne they come they go 
They come, they perish. They come, they are dethroned. They come, they are driven away. But God remains the same. He is the foremost wise God. And he has his own decree too. And when he makes his own decree, the decree of the eternal God will stand. We're looking at uh, Daniel chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 30. Daniel chapter 2, verse 30. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes, that shall make known the interpretation to the king, that thou mightest know the thoughts of thine heart. In Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 17. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. It says in verse 17, it tells us this matter is by the decree of the watches of the watchers and that and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high the most high god in heaven rules in the kingdom of men and giveth aid to whomsoever he will you see that the god of heaven the most high rulers in the kingdoms of men and he giveth the kingdoms to whomsoever he will and setteth over each even the people like look like the basest of men look at verse 24 in verse 24 it says this is the interpretation O king and this is the decree of the most high which is come upon my lord the king god is the one that rules and whoever he puts there is still in charge and he has a decree that supersedes that goes beyond the decree of any man in proverbs chapter 8 reading from verse 29 proverbs chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 29. When he gave to the sea, here is Christ talking. And he said, when the Father, the Almighty, the ancient of days, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then in verse 30, it says, Then I was by him. And then it says, As one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Psalm 2, we're looking at verse 6. In Psalm 2, looking at verse 6, it says, Yet I have searched my king upon my holy hill of Zion. That's the almighty saying. He has the final say. He has the final word about the dominions and the kingdoms of this world. And he says, I sent my, I sent my king. That's his only begotten son. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, I will declare the decree. He has the final decree on any life, on any king, on any community, on any nation. He has the final decree upon the kingdoms of this world. Nebuchadnezzar does not, did not have the final decree. There is another decree, the decree of the Almighty God that supersedes every other decree on earth. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And then in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, the Gentiles, for thine inheritance, and 
the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Then in verse 9, in verse 9 he said, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, because all judgment have been given to the hand of the Son of God, and shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And then in verse 10 he said, Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be wise now, O ye emperors. Be wise now, O ye rulers, because there is one that is higher than the highest. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. And then in verse 11, in verse 11, serve the Lord with fear that ye should fear. If you don't come to the Lord and seek the Lord, now if you perish, if you die in the condition of your sinfulness, even though you are a king, even though you are an emperor, even though you are a ruler, when will you spend eternity serve the Lord? Come and repent, come and seek the Lord and have salvation and remain and abide in that grace of God in salvation. It says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. And then in verse 12, it says, kiss the son. Befriend the son, make him your friend, and let all the wall of demarcation between you and the son, the savior, your substitute, and the redeemer. Let everything, the wall of demarcation, be broken down and befriend him. Let him say, you are my friend because I have called you, I have chosen you, and I have washed your sin, and I have made you a new creature now in Christ. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. And ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled, but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. You put your trust in him, in Christ, the Son of God, to be your Savior. You put your trust in him so that he can be your sanctifier. You put your trust in him so that he can empower you. And that power will make you to stand. And then you'll be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. And his nature will come into you. And because his nature comes into you, you will live the life that glorifies God. The life that when time is ending, dead here for you, for us, and for the world in the rapture, the resurrection you'll go with the Lord in Jesus name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer let's stand up, talk to the Lord in prayer and forget every other thing around you and forget you know, whatever it is, anything there, anything there, forget everything and call upon the name of the Lord. We've learned so much today and we need to take all that to the Lord so that his strength will be in us his power will be in us and the assurance and the fearlessness and the courage and the conviction will be in us. Look at Daniel. Why can't you be another Daniel today? Talk to the Lord in prayer and say, oh Lord, here am I. I have heard about the unforgettable Daniel. I want to so live my life that I too, by the grace of God in the strength of the Lord and with the real salvation I have, I will live an unforgettable life. It starts with salvation. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. That same change you made in Daniel and that same transformation you made in Daniel and that same courage you gave Daniel and that same conviction you gave Daniel, I want to so live the life that I'll fear nothing on earth and even the Kadnesa with a frown, with his fury and uh, with his uh, fire and uh, fiery nature. Lord, give me the heart that will live for you unforgettable, unforgettable. Anywhere that I find myself in my community, I'll so have the truth penetrating my life, saturating my life, and keeping me to stand firm on the truth. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and tell him, oh Lord, here am I. Pray a decisive prayer, a decisive prayer between you and the Lord, telling the Lord, oh Lord, I want to have that kind of life that is firm, fearless, focused, living for your glory. Tell him, and he will do it in your life. 
that your life to your neighbors, your life to your community, your life, anywhere, everywhere will be unforgettable. They'll know you are a child of God. They'll know you have the grace of God in you. They'll know that that grace of God in you teaches you to deny ungodliness and to deny all worldly lusts and then to live a righteous life, a godly life, a sober life. Tell the Lord, let the light of the gospel so shine in your life that everyone around you beholding you will know you are being of the Lord Jesus, that you are a new creature in Christ, that old things have passed away, and that all things have become new. And if you have friends, prayer partners, let them be people of this like precious faith. Let them be people who are not pretenders, who are not hypocrites. Let them be people who love the Lord like you love the Lord, who are committed to the Lord like you are committed to the Lord, who are consecrated to the Lord completely with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind. Let them be people who have the same understanding and the same deep commitment as you have unto the Lord. Let us say how Daniel surrounded himself with people of like precious faith who are your friends are they people that easily give up they can't endure a little persecution they can't endure a little trial they can't endure a passing decree and they are shaking and they, can't, they don't have the same faith you have in the promises of God are those your friends why don't you say Lord help me give me friends that have the same like precious faith friends that will stand where we ought to stand on the promises of God friends that have more of heaven than the earth in their lives tell the Lord tell the Lord that you'll be able to have a common faith when you make petition before the Lord and then you pray with confidence any challenge two of you shall agree together with confidence any problem common problem you're trying to solve and you pray with confidence confidence in the Lord that I know I know I know that God will answer and you have common confidence the same confidence in the promises of God that while they are yet speaking, I will answer. And before they finish it, making their petition, I'll give them the solution. And you have that confidence yourself. And then you surround yourself with the people that have the same, the same confidence. Not people that have a different doctrine a different interpretation, a different lifestyle, a backsliding lifestyle, a compromising lifestyle. No, the people that hold on to this world and they say, come what may. Here is where I stand and I stand with you. <clears throat> they stand with you. Tell the Lord. And when God answers prayer, then you come with praise. Praise before the perpetual praise. You're always praising the Lord. You're never grumbling, never complaining. Why did God bring me to this situation? Morning, noon, and night, you're praising the Lord. The answer has come. You're praising the Lord. The Jericho walls are still up. You're praising the Lord. The night in the dungeon, midnight, with Paul and Silas, you're praising the Lord. And it's the praise of God in your mouth, perpetually, that will grant you that miraculous answer that you are seeking. Present time, 
Praise the Lord. Hold off. Praise the Lord. Traffic jam. Praise the Lord. On the long queue of sweating in your car. Praising the Lord. At all times, in all things, at all places, in every situation, when the people of the world are talking negative and they're talking divergent things, you have your mouth filled with the praises of the Lord. Personal, personal praise. Personal praise. Praising the Lord in a personal way. That man said, seven days, seven times in the day, I praise your name and pray unto you. Every other hour, just remember the Lord. He is in charge. He is in charge. He is in charge. Nebuchadnezzar not taking the power away from the most high God. God is still in charge. Praise him all the time. I want you to before the people of this world. The fearless, bold, courageous. Don't think of man more than you think of God. Think of God. Meditate on God. Lean on God. Rely on God. Whatever is happening, if that thing is not of God, it will soon pass away. Any decree for many earthly king, nothing will pass away. It's the decree of the king of kings, the decree of the lord of lords that will stand forever and ever. Don't be afraid of any situation caused by man, planned by man, affected by man, he is man, she is just a woman, the king of heaven that has the final decree. And that final decree says you will live. That final decree says no man shall lay any hand on you to hurt you. The final decree, the decree of God says, he'll give you a long life until you finish the calling he has given you. The decree of the foremost wise king is wise. He knows what you need. He knows the direction of your life. He knows the calling upon your life. And has made a decree. For the son, his only begotten son. And for you, son of God, daughter of God. He'll do good in your life. Think of that. Meditate on that. He will see you through. Daniel lived all the days of Nebuchadnezzar. He lived beyond the days of Nebuchadnezzar. He lived beyond the days of Belshazzar. He lived beyond the days of the Middle Persian Empire. He lived, he lived, he lived. And all through his life, no fear, no timidity, no shaking, no compromise. And the grace of God preserved him until he finished what God called him to do. 
is gone. You are here. The Lord will see you through. Amen. <clears throat> In Jesus' name we pray. Can I tell you that the Lord has answered your prayer? That everything you have been afraid of and your heart was beating for, the problem is solved. The secret that perplexed you as you go back home, the Lord himself will reveal that secret. Your life will be lived straightforward, courageously, lovingly, confidently. You are not rude to anybody and you are not cruel to anybody and nobody will be rude or cruel to you in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand, please. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for what you did for Daniel in particular, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and for that team. And he came to the king, and the king then dropped all his threat, he was going to kill everybody. Lord, we pray you will use your sons and your daughters in the service today here, all over the nation, all over the continent, all over the world. Do something special with every brother, every sister in Jesus' name. All the evil decree that other people, other kings or presidents or whatever, leaders of the world that they're bringing up that will ruin, that will destroy, that will slay the lives of people, use your sons here, use your daughters here, use your sons everywhere and your daughters Bring them to the position that they will crush and destroy all evil decrees in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we're just getting to know some good new revelations. And Lord, now that we have this revelation, which we didn't have in the past, concerning our personal lives and concerning your church and concerning the believers everywhere, Lord, Spare our lives. Prolong our lives. So that all that we are getting to know now, we will make use of them profitably in our communities everywhere in Jesus' name. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of your people. Let the knowledge of the Almighty strengthen us from within in Jesus' name. Lord, you know us, we know ourselves. In the past, we have been timid, we have been fearful, we have been doubtful, we have been anxious. But now, from this present time, let the power of God make us steady. The strength of God energize us in Jesus' name. And Lord, no more fear. No more fear of the devil. No more fear of evil spirits. No more fear of any man. No more fear of any woman. No more fear of any decree of man in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, strengthen your people. Energize your people. Empower your people. And help us to have our eyes open so that we look straight ahead and nothing will divert us in Jesus' name. Power for everyone. Strength for everyone. Vision for everyone. Stability of life for everyone. And Lord, by your special, special gift, long life for everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you all the glory. We honor and praise your name. We worship you. We adore you for everything you are doing in our lives as leaders. Thank you for this Sunday prayer. Thank you for our service today, revealing to us our superiority, 
our high and superior priesthood over Aeon and the priesthood in the Old Testament. Thank you for what Calvary had purchased for us. Thank you for what you did for us on the cost of Calvary. We thank you for the great work. We thank you for the great intervention. We thank you for what Calvary had purchased for us. We are grateful unto you. Hallowed be thy name. Praises, honor, adoration be forever ascribed to you. Lord, even tonight, as we have come, hear us from heaven and intervene greatly and mightily in our lives. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 So at this time, I want to begin to give thanks to God and to worship Him. I want to begin to thank Him. Who is like unto thee? Who is like unto thee? Who is like unto thee, O Lord? In the morning you are good, in the evening you are kind. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Who is like unto thee? Who is like unto thee? Who is like unto thee, O Lord? In the morning you are good, in the evening you are kind. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? I love that man of Galilee for he has done so very much for me he has forgiven me all my sins and the Holy Ghost to me I love that man oh Galilee Na la na ai na re ke le o na re ke le mo wo shala wenda unto Jehovah. For he has done so very much for me. What shall I render unto Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Oh, now I let's open our mouth and give thanks to god let's worship the name of the lord let's glorify him let's adore him let's reverence him let's adore him for whom he is let's say father we are grateful unto you Jesus, we honor your name. Holy Ghost, we adore you. Father, we adore you. We lift our before you. Our adore you. Jesus, Want to give Father the praise, 
want to give Father the honor, want to give Father the adoration, want to glorify His holy name. Can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Let's honor the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's adore the Lord. Let's magnify His holy name. Give him thanks, give him praise, give him honor, give him adoration. He has done us well. He has done us well. Hallelujah. He has done us well. Hallelujah. He has done us well. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. What's happening? Can you people hear me? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. At this time, I want to go before the Lord tonight. I want to ask the Lord to hear us even this time we are spending in the place of prayer that nothing will stand as a barrier to our prayer. The Lord will hear us, the Lord will stand by all. The Lord will hear us and he will intervene. The Lord will hear us and take absolute control. The Lord will hear us and move in our midst and our family. Shall we pray? You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh. Hey. You are Yahweh, oh Lord, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha. Omega. I want to go before the Lord tonight and say, Father, anything that will stand as a barrier to our prayer, let the Lord yank off tonight in Jesus' name. Take away barrier. God hates iniquity. God hates sin. God hates unrighteousness. God hates compromise. Father, anything in our lives, anything in our lives, anything in our lives, oh God, in anyone that we stand to our prayer, in all our prayer, oh Jesus, take you, cleanse us, forge us, purify us, purify, Lord, purify, until my heart pure than good, purify, Lord. Purify, Lord, till my heart, your heart and good. Purify, Lord, purify, until my heart, your heart and good. Purify, Lord, purify, until my heart. Your heart and go. Yes, the Lord is hearing. Yes, the Lord is hearing. Purifying our heart, cleansing our heart. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Tonight, we'll be lifting up the hands of our Moses and other lieutenants uh, to God in prayer. We have the Moses of the platform, and then we shall be praying for all our Moses, all our leaders on the platform, 
and then particularly we shall pray uh, uh the way i'm going to lead tonight specifically is that we will pray uh for the next 15 minutes we shall be praying for pastor matthew for the next 15 minutes and then we will pray for all our various pastors who have peculiar challenges who have one or two challenges who have something they are going through but the way i'm going to lead that of pastor matthew I would like to read scripture uh, on that. I want to read from the scripture of truth. I want to read from God's holy word. What does God ask for us in his word? In 1 John chapter 3, in 1 John chapter 3, what told in his word there, in verse 22, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. He said, whatsoever we ask, we receive. Amen? Whatsoever we ask, we receive. Whatsoever we ask, we receive. And so, whatever we ask tonight, we shall receive. God's servant shall receive. God's servant will enjoy it. Whatever we ask God in the place of prayer, consigning the servant of God, the Lord will hear. And so as we begin tonight, we'll be, I'll be touching different departments of the life of God's servant. But we shall begin with the O. We want to pray that the almighty God, almighty God, all, almighty God, he has said, whatsoever we ask, we receive. We pray, O oh Lord, that Lord, 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 come take your place. Come take your place. In the old, come take your place. Let the Holy Ghost hijack the old. Let God hijack the old. Let God continue to hijack the old. In the name of Jesus, let all infiltration be cleared off. Are you praying? All infiltration. You understand that prayer? Do you understand that? All infiltrations. All infiltrations. I can't hear anyone praying. All infiltrations. All infiltrations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every form of infiltration to cause God's servant pain, infiltration from the pit of hell. Let's lift his hand up. Let's stand in the gap. Father, clear of infiltrations. Demonic infiltrations, witchcraft infiltrations. Manipulation from the pit of hell. Covenant from the pit of hell. We cancel. God's servant will enjoy his life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I read 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 14. I just read 1 Peter 3, 22. Now I'm reading 1 Peter 14, uh, 5, 14. Look at it. 
And this is a confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Amen. He said, if we ask anything, if it's not according to his will, no Allah, he will not hear us. But provided what we are asking is according to the will of God, God will hear us. We are going to pray. Whatever power that want to uh whatever power at vow, power at vow in any way. Power at plan and projected against the life of God's servants that he will not enjoy his life to the fullest. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, today, today, God paralyzed those powers. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 2, 10, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. Yes, out of heaven, the Lord shall thunder against them. Let the Lord thunder against them. Shall we pray? Are there people here except, uh, except at home? I can't hear anybody. I can't even hear. Is it the only one hearing me? Okay. I believe others should hear me if, if uh, at home is here. Let's be praying. Okay. Let's be praying. The Lord shall disgrace those power. The power that I vow to disgrace him shall be disgraced. He that did get a peace shall fall into it. That's what the Bible says. Whatever pit that is dug for pastor. Whoever is responsible, digging that pit shall fall into that pit. Yes, I will give men for thy life. That's what the scripture says. When the enemy shall come like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. If they come in the dream, they will be defeated. If they visit pastor in the dream, the Lord will defeat them. If they come in the day, they will be defeated. If they come to the end, God will defeat them. If they come to the water, God will defeat them. If they come to driving and they want to cause accident, God will defeat anyway, anyway, they will be defeated and disappointed and embarrassed by God in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? In the name of Jesus, they will be disgraced. They will be subdued. They will be nullified. They will be broken and sunder. Every power from the pit of hell, mangrove power, demonic power, agent of darkness. In the name of Jesus, you will disgrace them, O oh God. You will disgrace them, O oh God. You will disgrace them, O oh God. By your spirit, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord has answered in Jesus' name. We want to go to the ministry. Yes. The Bible says in Luke chapter 12, 32, Pastor Matthew, here is a scripture for you. Fear not, little flock, for it's in the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. God will give you the kingdom of charity. God will give you the ultimate kingdom at last. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray for the number one. The kingdom of charity will be given to you. It is your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom of charity and its environment. That the souls that are daring, the Holy Ghost will arrest them. God will lift your hands up in ministry as declared by God's servant upon you. God will lift your hands up in ministry. God will send Epaphras to you. God will send Epaphroditus to you. God will send Epaphras, the prayer warrior. God will send partners, partners who are willing and ready to serve God, who are willing to pursue God vehemently. The Lord will send partners to you. The Lord will send partners. The Lord will send laborers, go laborers in Christ, in the name of Jesus. Are we praying?
Yes. In the, name of the Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Spirit of God, I ask, oh God, you will send laborer, you will send worker, you will send, oh God, committed and devoted men, oh God, to Charlotte. The land of Charlotte will be conquered, conquered by your servant. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, wherever all the soul of our foot shall tread upon, shall be given to us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, want to go to the Lord in prayer quickly. Want to ask the Lord in the name of Jesus. Want to pray. We have prayed on the ministry aspect. We want to ask the Lord every power contending against the work that God has given to our pastor, Pastor Matthew. In the name of Jesus, the Bible say that a virtual door that been opened. Do you know that Pastor Matthew has been reaching out to various distinct of the world? And that's a virtual door. The YouTube is there for showing the 100,000. And just like that, we want to pray in the name of Jesus as a virtual door has been opened. All those adversaries God will bury and destroy and shatter. Adversary of the gospel, adversary of the work God has committed into his hand, whether they are household enemy, whether they are insiders or outsider anywhere they are, God will expose them in the name of Jesus. Pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You see, you see, uh, it is good you pray for leaders. It is good you pray for leaders. Many people, what they just do is that they gossip their pastor, gossip their leaders. They will not pray. They will not do any spiritual exercise, but they can talk. And that reminds me of a story very quickly. I will tell us uh, that was uh, that was uh, narrated by uh, a man of God, a very powerful man of God. Uh, the founder is it founder? It's not the founder, okay? That's the Chidi Okara for Reverend Chidi Okara for that's number one man in Assemblies of God in Nigeria. Yeah, he was talking about a story. I was listening to it some years ago. And he was talking about a particular church. Things were just cold and mechanical and just dry like that, like that. And there's about uh, how many brothers, whether three or four of them, either two or three or four of them, they went into the church room, whether it's a church or one of the rooms in the church, they locked themselves off for like days, some days. I don't know whether it was four days, but for some days, I think about four days or more. And then they locked, they began to pray for the church. They were praying for the church. They were praying for their pastor. They were praying for the church all of a sudden. After they finished prayer, they came out of that place. And they, they knew God as answer. They knew God had prayed. The new revival was coming already. They have dealt, you know, in the place of prayer with the environment and everything. And eventually they came out. And when they came out, I think they got extra chairs and all of that. Then they had a program. Or is it a program or maybe normal service? Let me know how to you. Maybe it's normal service or a program. And uh, they didn't invite uh, maybe guest minister. It was their pastor, the same pastor. According to Chidi Okara for the Reverend, he said the same pastor, the same pulpit and all of that. And then uh, just like that, by the time the pastor got to the pulpit, because some men have secretly wired the pastor in the place of prayer. And then, the power of God, the man, the Chidi Okafo was saying, have you seen where the power of God carries somebody and throw through the window, and throw away through the window or whatever? He said, I have seen. What, what did God do in that meeting? The power of God began to, it was, it was something else. And the, the people around, they were wondering, that, ah, what is this pastor doing? And all of that. So they were not knowing that it was an avenue for God to increase that church and, uh, you know, announce that church and all of that. 
and that was the power of God. people that came to watch to look and all of that the power was so much was so much because some men pray it was not it wasn't not the same thing in the life of dl modi two women miracle will be taking place and there were just two women who were praying praying for dl modi until they die and things were not going the way they should go again until he has to pray and god revealed and then he knew that he was not the one even responsible for the miracles it was those women that were praying for him that's what intercessory prayer can do in the life of people what do we find in the church today gossip what even among leadership unfortunately gossip talk 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 gossip talk talk no prayer we want to pray and say father the church at charlotte will grow in the name of jesus every power contending against that church the god of heaven will bury those power god will bury those power all the territorial power in charlotte kingdom in charlotte area territorial demons and agent of darkness tonight god will chain and bind them shall we pray Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, that all the demonic agents and personality, all the adversaries, oh God, in charity exist, in the name of Jesus, you will chain them, you will bind them in the name of Jesus and unfold. They will become inactive, they will become incapable by your spirit, oh God, any power that is saying no to the ministry, any power that is saying no to the advancement, any power that they say no to the progress, O oh Lord of Charlotte Church, we say in the name of Jesus, be exposed by fire. We say in the name of Jesus, be subdued and consumed and conquered by the Spirit of God and by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask, O oh God, that you will move so unnaturally. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. The Lord has answered in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to pray for all our pastors. All our pastors. We want to ask the Lord now at this time, all our pastors who are going through some financial challenges. Let's start with that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's start with their ministry. Let's start with their family. If it's a family problem, family challenge, let the Lord solve. As many pastors that are having family, as many pastors who are having issue with their children, want to pray in the name of Jesus. Let God come to their rescue. Let God come to intervention. Let God intervene in their situation. As many of our pastors anywhere, oh God, whether they're on the platform or not, let God show mercy and let God heal and let God deliver and let God rescue and let God take away all the things that ought not to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, do it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We're going to pray. As many of our pastors that are having ministerial challenges, they preach and yet no impact on the people, or they preach and the life of the people are remaining the same, or there's ministerial challenge, or there's one thing or the other that they tend not to understand in the ministry, and they are being confused totally and being totally derailed. We want to pray, Father, come to the rescue of your servant. No servant of yours will be confused about the ministry you have given him or ah, My God, there will be clarity. There is nothing as wonderful and beautiful as clarity. There is nothing as wonderful as knowing where God has called you and where God is leading you. We want to pray all our pastors and leaders. We find clarity. We find direction. None of us will be clueless. None of us will blind pastor, blind leaders, blind men of God. My God and my Father, let there be direction. Holy Ghost direction. In the name of Jesus, let there be direction. By your Spirit, O oh God, let there be direction. Do it, O oh God. Do it, my Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We want to pray, we are still going to pray, we are going to ask the Lord 
we are going to call upon the name of the Lord concerning all our pastors and leaders. That's when we are having financial challenges. We want to pray that God will literally intervene. We want to pray that God will literally open doors. We want to pray that God will literally wipe this, the secret tears away. I told us on this platform before, if a man, whether he's a pastor or not, does not have a job and cannot take care of his family, that man is never a happy man. I'm telling you, except something is wrong with that man. Any man you see, even an unbeliever, if they are not able to take care of their family, they are usually very sad. They are usually very unhappy. Man is no for work. Man is no with his work. And if the man is jobless and he does not have anything doing, it, it can be very painful. It can affect every other aspect of that man. We want to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, change the status quo. Change the situation. Change the situation for our brethren. As many who are jobless, give them job. Good job, good job. Not 25,000 naira in a moon. Not 30,000 naira in a moon. Not even 35,000, not even 50,000. All of those money, what can somebody do with all those money in this kind of economy? We want to pray God will establish all our pastors. God will establish them all. God will establish them all in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the Lord supernaturally provide. Let the Lord extraordinarily provide. Let the Lord open doors for everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray. We are still going to pray. I, have you realized that once even the financial aspect is not in order, even preaching, and you find a whole lot of things will not even go well. And then you see the woman begins to grumble if it's not highly spiritual as such. And then before you know it, it be, she begins to say some mum, mum, something, saying something, saying something. And then before you know it, the, the man himself is, is feeling uneasiness. And he will not know before he will begin to say something to the wife out of anger, out of frustration. And then before you know it, little by little, the devil can get into that hope because of poverty. You know, there's some people think once you are poor, you can remain a Christian. The devil can even capture a man because of lack. And the devil can tempt the man and the man will fall. This is why Solomon has to pray. He pray never to be in that state of abject poverty whereby he will cause God in his heart and begin to question God. And then he's also praying, he should not get to a point whereby he forgets God. We also don't want to get to a point where we begin to cause God in our heart. And we are wondering why all this suffering and pain and agony, is there no bam in Gilead? We want to pray, there is a bam in Gilead. Let God open the floodgate of heaven for our pastor. Our pastor cannot be struggling financially. Our pastor cannot be struggling to feed their family. No, they are servants of God. Jesus became poor so that we might be rich. Let's pray that God will give them endowment. God will endow them. God will give them skill. You know, money hide in skill. Money hide in opportunity. Money hide in problem. Money hide in ideas. Money hide in ideas. And Lord God, the skill, the idea that we give money and generate money. Oh, God, give to our pastor. In the name of Jesus Christ, let things change. Let situation turn around. Let the narrative change in our life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our leaders we have enough, our pastor we have enough, they will have enough to give others, they will have enough to spare, they will have enough to distribute. None will be beggars, none will be lacking here and there, none will be beggar. They will not make a recapture of our pastors, our leader. God will open windows of heaven and supernaturally supply. Do it, oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. If, amen. The children of all our pastors, yes, their children will succeed. Their children will succeed. Their children will succeed. None of our pastors, we have vagabond as children. None of our pastors, we have Aristo ladies, Aristo girls as their children. None of our pastors, we have children that we give them edict. None of our pastors that will have children that will raise their high blood pressure. None of our pastors will have children that will become children of Belia. My God, my daughter will not be a child of Belia. God forbid. It will not be on record that will affair me. Ah, that's why coming from a Christian home, she ended up being a daughter of Belia, a daughter of Babylon. God forbid. 
I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, she will be a beacon of light, a beacon of hope. I decree over the life of my daughter, fair on me, you will be a beacon of hope. You will be a beacon of light. You will, you, you will be a shining light in the name of Jesus. The things of this life, the glittering thing, the glamorizing thing, and the glamour of this world, and the things that are, you know, you know, attracting the young people, pulling them from the way of God, will not pull you out of the way. You will serve God at your early day. Salvation will hit you very early in life. Your life will be preserved from corruption and decadence in the name of <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Put them in the name of Jesus. I bring my children up to you, my deep wonder. I put them in the name of Jesus. You will protect my son. You will watch over my son. You will watch over my daughter. By the Spirit of God, they will all be preserved. All the children that that will be given to me, I make a decree. I make a decree. They will follow the way of the God. They will follow the way of the cross. They will follow the way of the cross. They will follow the way of holiness. They will live for you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. 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 We want to pray for our wives. We want to ask our wives we cooperate with us. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray a prayer. Satan will not speak to our wife, thereby deceiving us. Satan will not enter our wife like he entered Judas Iscariot. Oh God, as many wives that Satan has entered among our pastors and members in the name of Jesus, deliver such a one. Oh God, deliver such a one. Oh God, deliver such a one. Oh God, deliver such a one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just remember something now. I just remember. I just remember. There's a movie I, I saw. You know, I keep telling us about movie. It's not just to watch movie. It's to pick sundry lessons from movie. You know, it, they give you a night. You know how Satan, how that man, the man was trying to capture this particular sister on campus. He could not get that sister. And then, even when the sister now, had not left the campus, the man himself had left the campus, a dubious man. Now, the, the woman now married to a Christian man. And then she's living a Christian life, having children and all. And yet, this same man who had been pursuing this woman <clears throat> will not turn back. And then went ahead to make a boast and even do diabolical power to still come to this woman, even after he had married. The devil is a bad devil, bastard, a vagabond, a non entity. You can imagine that. And then this man was even making boast before his friend, making boast. And then that he will get this sister, all these church sisters, they are easy to get, blah, blah, blah. He was just saying it. And little by little, he was able to penetrate into the emotion of our this our our so-called sister in the movie. Enter. Thank God they did not go far into the intimacy. He would have wasted that. And the woman was already drifting away. His our love for the husband was already drifting away. They were not even staying in the same room anymore, sleeping in separate room like that, because the other man had captured the emotion of this man. That's how some of these people are. Their emotions are captured, and then they begin to pick offenses from their husband, or it could be the man. It begins to pick unnecessary offense, our offense from the why. You know, the devil is already raging in that hole. We are going to pray. In the name of Jesus, let the Lord deliver our wife. Let the Lord deliver our men. As men who have been captured by Satan, their emotions have been captured, their hearts have been captured. Hey! Father, the power and the blood of Jesus Christ for all the family that is going to this why the emotion they have been captured. Father, we pray by the power and the blood. You are going to deliver them in the name of Jesus Christ. King of King, you are going to deliver them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, 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 you are going to deliver them in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power and the blood, Lord, you are going to deliver them. Almighty oh, Father, you are going to deliver them. King of King, you are going to deliver them. Almighty oh, Father, I pray by the power and the blood, Lord Jesus Christ. You are going to deliver everyone from the emotional. Oh, Almighty Father, I pray by the power and you are going to deliver them in the name of Jesus Right. But I pray for everybody that is going in that way. Oh, mighty oh. Father, 
that the okay. wife or the husband. Oh my dear Father, I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not disturb their house in the name of Jesus we will not destroy their house in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, my dear Father, you will uphold their house in the name of Jesus Christ. In any time, in area, by the name of them, and that's the rejoice of enjoying their managing their marriage. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, all the third party, all the symbol that have been destroying marriages from all our leaders to the member of the church, to the friend, to the family. Remember, we know. Father, I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are going to uphold all the, all, the, all the problem in the name of Jesus Christ. And the glory will belong go to your son. Oh, mighty God. Amen. 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 Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 We are going to pray right now. Uh, there's no amount of prayer. You can pray for the children. That will be too much. We want to pray for them. God will shield our family, our children in particular, from the decadence of the world. There are some children now, the devil, in fact, the level of corruption and evil today is terrific. I work with young people. Of course, I still work with adults too, as a pastor, as a leader. But then I, my goal and my, my, the nature of my work and all that is how I relate with the young people. And as they discuss with me and all that, you know that there is so much decadence in the world. There's so much corruption and evil. The level of immorality has so much deteriorated that you, it is so alarming, so mm. alarming, that except by divine mercy, grace, and all that, shielding your own children, you will be shocked that children that were brought up in the way of the law, getting to teenage age, getting to a particular age, they are just becoming so influenced. Who want to pray? Our children will be shielded from the decadence of the world. Our <laughs> children will be shielded. Our <laughs> children will be shielded. Oh, God, shield my children. Our children, in the name of Jesus Christ. King God, can you we bail our children out in the name of Jesus Christ? Oh, my dear Father, pay by the power and the blood. We bail our children out in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, the efficacy. Oh, my dear Father of the world. For oh, all what is going in the world. King God, King Lord, 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 pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. You will we bail our children out in the name of Jesus Christ. King God, King, you will bail our children out in the name of Jesus Christ. We are oh, Oh, amen, amen, amen. Before I close, as I close now in the next two minutes, uh, you, as you read the situation of election in Nigeria, you will hear many of the young people, and uh, some of them, they will be talking as if uh, they understand the meaning of war. Uh, <laughs> many of not even no civil war, uh, how it was, where I'm science, but uh, well, I live from the little story we have had and all of that. And then, and uh, the history, a lot of people have read. If, no, I'm not even going to history, even the community I'm staying, uh, the area I am, even though I'm not in the heart of where the real begin used to take place, but if people are living there, common riot like this. You are, you know that is uh, is something that we are talking of war. If we know people who have experienced war, will not even want to ask for it the second time, because even during war, you don't know who is father or mother, you don't know who is who. It's operation life ahead on your own, and you run for your own very dear life. And but you hear the drum of war, people are just uh, doing, uh, you know. Are doing and all of that in Nigeria now because of election, this one, that one. And uh, look at Twitter, what is going there. Look at all of the things they are doing. And uh, if what take place, these people are not Christian. If they die, they go to hell straight. Maybe they don't even understand that they die. God will not say because you are fighting for the economy of Nigeria. God is not sentimental and carried away by emotionalism. The person will go to hell and burn forever and ever. So want to pray, lastly, as I hand over to Pastor uh, Peter, 
now and to Pastor Matthew that the God of heaven will cause peace to reign in Nigeria. Everything will go smoothly. Mm -hmm. We don't want death. We don't want un unnecessary death. People just dying, going to hell, living for eternity on prepare, and the devil is just causing death, causing what? No, it will not be. Let there be peace. Let there be tranquility. We Imagine. are made for peace. There are people yes. of peace. Oh, Pastor Peter. Praise the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. I saw him on the line, although he told him he's travel to Enugu, but I'm saying his name on the line. Um, on that page, we continue to call upon the name of, upon the name of the Lord. The Bible let me know, prayer is the key. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, especially for this platform, people will show more interest in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. You know, when devil want to attack one person or the other, the first thing he will seize from that person is to be seeking the face of the Lord, is to be seeking Almighty God. Let's call upon the name of the Lord, that by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, this platform will continue to increase in the name of Jesus Christ. The purpose of creating it is for more prayer, deep prayer, because we call it the gathering of the ego. When we started it, what we thought is that the Thursday is already common. We look at it, that Saturday is already common. Then we want the ego to, to, to gather together so that they can able to pray, to back up the Thursday prayer, to back up the to back up the uh, Saturday prayer. But now we can see the number, our leaders, this that they are becoming uh do not care more about it. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord that by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, God will help us. The prayer platform will be enlarged again in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power in the blood of Jesus Almighty Father, we enlarge the prayer platform again in the name of Jesus Christ. Things that have never seen. Thing that have never been done. As we are leaning down, as we are calling upon the name of the Lord, God is going to be revealing and solve the problem for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. What is the way of worship? The way of worship is evangelism. What is the way of evangelism? The way of evangelism is to call the leaders together to come in agreement that Almighty Father will close the war in Nigeria. The Almighty Father will close the poverty in the life of individuals. The Almighty Father will co close the embarrassment in the family of each individual. But when we do not gather, how are we going to pray? Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ I and you on this platform and on this platform we will stand on the gap. 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 Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, yes, as we are going to meet in the evening on a serial life. Or the, 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 the fine intervention that by the power that we will not find you missing. We will not find me missing. We will call other people. We will remind them that this is what happened this afternoon. This is what would happen. And we are feeling disappointed. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, the, this platform will rise up to expectation in the name of Jesus Christ. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, Almighty God will help us to rise up to our tradition in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not find the leader wanting. We will not find the leader wanting. They will use their time. They will use their talent. They will use everything God has given to them. They will use their, their wealth for the growing of this platform in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us remember, Pastor Ali, that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, as far as the pyramid is important, this one too will be important to him in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us remember, Pastor Shegun, we do not know why it's not uh, it's not on the line. It's very, very unusual. Let's call upon the name of the Lord, that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, devil will not bring an entrance before them to be attending the prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Mr. Peter, I've 
I've, I've traveled, but I've seen many people that travel because they want to discuss with people. They will say, "Let me park," and they will park somewhere, and then they will be, they will be, they will start the dialogue.